Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for attending my presentation. First of all, I want, of course, to thank the team of Get Digital for inviting me here. It's really nice to meet around the world. As he said, we met in New York and now I'm here in Dublin first time. So yeah, I'm really happy to be here and to share my knowledge and my research with you. You will see um, a little bit of academic perspective that I'm delivering to you as I'm doing my PhD. But um, yeah, I would like to start with kind of a Christmas history. Um, yeah, so maybe you just enjoy the clip. Okay, isn't that so nice? I don't mean the Christmas things. I mean, yes, I love Christmas and everything around it, but I don't mean that exactly. I mean the augmented reality they have used. So I ho hope you've seen it. At the end, there was a polar beer, and they, yeah, they just introduced it to their uh, visitors. So you can go in that room, and um, there's an augmented reality experience with cameras and screens, and you can interact with this animal, and it's splashing around, and you can jump, and it's jumping too, and you're having a lot of fun. And yes, uh, this was an example of the uh, Into Trafford Center. It's close to Manchester, very nice, big shopping center, and they're doing it every year. So every year, another animal is invited to come. And um, yeah, why are they doing it? I mean, of course, they are promoting it like um, they want to, um, yeah, to give the kids the opportunity to interact with the animals, to think of the environment, what is happening, what kind of animals do we have. But of course, they also want to attract customers and visitors to their shopping center to increase the food fall and the sales. So this was a quick introduction to my um, research. We are looking at retail agglomerations. Saying that, we're looking at shopping malls, at high streets, town centers, and um, city centers. And we are yeah, de describing them as retail agglomerations, meaning that we have a, um, a a street or a district with um, a lot of service providers, also retail providers. There are more traditional ones like the big chains you for sure know, but there are also the smaller ones like um, some local stores and handcrafted things. And yeah, we're looking at the mix of it. And yeah, why we are doing that? Because we think that retailing is a really interesting industry. There's a huge econom economic footprint. In Ireland, as I know, there are around 5 million people living here. Does anyone have an idea how many people of this 5 million are employed in retailing? Or any guessing? I, I have heard something. Half a million, it's a little bit less. A little bit more, yeah, around 300,000. So um, retailing is important for the economy, not only in Ireland, also. Europe around the world. So I think it's worth um, doing our research in it. And at the same time, it's a little bit alarming because there are a lot of stores closing in the main streets and shopping centers. The vacancy rates are higher and higher. Um, in Ireland, it's around 40%. This means that 30% of the stores are closing, are shutting down. We have large chains um, closing, like Toys R Us, for example. It the UK was affected more of it, but also here around. Um, so we are seeing something changing, and um, yes, the digitalization and the digital transformation. There is, um, yeah, there, there is an effect on it, but we are not saying that um, you have to 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 see one side to online and one side to offline world. We want like to mix it up. We are seeing uh, possibilities and chances in the um, digital transformation and digital services. So we are thinking that um, inner city shopping areas, shopping centers, they need to use digital services to compete with their competitors and also with online retailing. So just to give you a quick overview, it's a little bit academic. So just that you understand, um, these are the three 
objects of investigation. So we have the shopping center, high street and town center, and we are saying, oh, so this normally the slide looks a little bit different. Sorry for that, but I think you can read it. Uh, yes. So um, the shopping center normally we have as planned agglomerations. So there are exact borders and it's planned. High streets and town centers we consider unplanned, not because they are just. I mean, you can't think like they're unplanned, but um, this is the general term in academia. So this means there are no exact borders normally. Normally you can't say um, the town center ends here, but it's like a little bit like open. So that's the main difference. And also the management for the shopping centers, we see a one central management. For high street and town center, normally we have the city council, city management, whatever. And um, yeah, to coming to our research background, we said that we want to inves investigate the attractiveness of retail destinations. Okay, saying that, um, in academia, as you know, you have to define everything. <laughs> so what is meant with attractiveness of retail destinations? If I ask you now, what is that? <coughs> For sure, every one of you can imagine something, but it's hard to put in words, isn't it? So normally when we are talking about attractiveness, I would say you're thinking maybe of her or of him, could be. Um, in our research context, we are talking about the pull effect. This means customers and visitors are pulled to a retail destination. They are pulled to a high street, to a shopping center, and that means th that center or the destination is attractive. So. Um, yeah, and we're calling it destination because I think that fits good to the presentation of Ellen that we had because we're saying that it is a destination because you want to go there, you want to visit there, you want to live there, to work there. It's not only retailing, it's about, yeah, it's about the whole life spending in, um, in a retail destination. So that's why we're not saying not only high street, but we're saying it's a destination for a couple of purposes. In traditional marketing, there are like the four Ps or also uh, some other related concepts. And we're saying yes for um, explaining what makes a retail destination attractive. There is the location, pricing, incentive, services, tenant mix, products. But we're not only seeing it on a physical basis, but on a digital one. So for example, um, digital offers helping the visitor to inform about the location and so on. So I just want to give you a um, quick overview about the studies that we are doing. So um, for this first study, we said we wanted to have a first look at what kind of digital services and devices do you have out there? What are retail agglomerations using? And how are customers accepting it and adapting it? So um, I just took that from a paper we published last year. And we said, OK, the framework is there are fixed and there are mobile devices. And these devices are delivering the digital services to the customer. And then also the um, device can belong to the retail agglomeration or the customer, depends. Depends on the journey of the um, customer. If, if he's at home, of course, he would use a mobile or fixed device belonging to him or her. If he's in the retail agglomeration inside, he could also use a device not only belonging to him or her, but also provided from retail destination. So we have, um, I think that the mobile ones are obvious, like mobile phone, tablet, laptop. For the fixed ones, we are seeing kind of display boards. Um, yesterday, when I walked through the city here, I've seen a lot of display boards. So they're like huge boards, or boards also walls. They're advertising um, any kind of promotions or um, locations or something around. They are not interactive normally, so I can't interact with the board. It's advertising something and that's it. For the things down here, like the self-service machines, the customer service terminals, they are more like I can interact with it. I can pay something or I can say, I'm looking for the way, show me the way. That would be kind of the service we're looking at. Um, very interesting link in our study here, we found out that the size of the digital device is very important to the visitors of a retail destination. <coughs> that means we um, conducted some interviews and people were telling us that they don't want other people to see what they are searching for or looking for. Meaning um, the most preferred device is the smartphone and the own one. Then second, third place, they're also using 
fix devices provided by retail, retail agglomeration, but they, they want to use a small thing, like a tablet or a, s a smaller display, and then they can put up, I want to find H&M, and then the device is searching it for him or her. But um, like big walls or big shelves are not that popular, just because, yeah, people don't want other people to see what they're doing in a retail destination. We put that devices, the fixed ones and the <laughs> mobile ones into a framework of the customer journey, meaning that we think that retail destinations should not only concentrate on um, visitors on site, but also the whole journey, like what can visitors do before and after the visit? How can they interact with the retail destination? How can they get information? And so we see there are different um, phases and with different, I would say, focuses. So the people we interviewed, they, couldn't, um, they mentioned that um, before they want to check like the availability, what kind of incentives are in the retail destination, um, how is the location in general, how can I get there. Then when they're on site, their um, location-based promotions are really um, popular like walking by and you got a prom promotion on your mobile phone and then you can get an incentive and afterwards recommendations of products and re or reviews and also checking receipts or delivery are really um, getting more and more popular. So just to show you the framework and then uh, the last of the three would be that um, we looked at the um, acceptance of this digital services meaning Maybe some of you have heard it. There is a technology acceptance model saying that technologies are um, need to be easy to use and useful. And so we figured out some couple of things that the customers want when they're using the technologies. But what I would say is really interesting here is that for the ease of use and also for the usefulness, they said that they want to have the choice meaning they don't want to have only human assistance or only digital assistance. They want to have uh, maybe a cooperation or at least a choice. Meaning if there's a digital device and I'm not able to use it, then I want to have a human, ass human assist assistance somewhere to help me. And also in, in the other way around. Also a very interesting the location. They said it's very important that they can find the digital device if it's not mobile, not my mobile phone. Okay, so that they want to um, have easy locations and that they can find very good to use the device. And um, for the usefulness part, it was really interesting. They said like, okay, why should I use that device and that service if I can get the same online at home, maybe from a competitor? So they said they want something special about it, something exclusive like um, location-based promos promotions. I'm going through Main Street here and I'm getting some kind of promotions on my mobile phone or at a display just because I'm there. Okay, so um, yeah, then a quick a few on our second project. We're doing a scale development here. So um, this means it's a really long project, I would say. And what we want to do in the end is we want to be able to measure the performance of digital services within retail destinations. As we know, there is no scale out there, not in academia and also not in a business that are measuring s the performance of digital services. So that's really what we are doing. The way is long because like a scale means at the end we have questionnaire and we're distributing the questionnaire to retail destinations. And when using it, the retail destination ca can find out how the digital service or device they're offering is performing. But like, it's not that I'm like thinking of five questions and giving it to retail <laughs> destination. It is a long process. We are doing consumer interviews, online panels. Um, we talked with experts. We had two rounds of it. Experts have been from academia and also from business half half. Then we're doing kind of sur student surveys and also again online panels and field experiments. So we really um, are testing the validity and reliability of our scale. So. Um, the current scale looks like it has three phases, digital services before, on-site and after the visit, with 12 dimensions and at the moment 40 questions. Uh, we know like 40 questions is, is a lot, so we're not, the scale is not 100% <laughs> finished. We are pre-testing it because our aim is to have like an acad academ academic <laughs> questionnaire with like 40 or 30 questions. And we're also uh, trying to have a business questionnaire with maybe 10, 15 questions maximum so that you really can ask the customers 
of your um, retail destination, but you're not overwhelming them. So yes, that's what we are doing in our project. I just brought you one of the items or statements we are using would be the offer digital services up to date. This is a general one, not related to a uh, phase of the visitor journey, but also but um, a general one. And with this question and several other questions, you would be able to um, yeah, assess the performance of the digital services you were offering to your customers.